Welcome to the Joy Center. We're so glad you joined us today. When you come to the Joy Center, you can expect to be welcomed into a friendly, positive environment by people who are genuinely excited to see you. This is a place where you can connect with other people like you, engage in timely and relevant teaching and worship, and most importantly, have an encounter with God. Come expecting God to move your heart and life. It's time to experience the joy.
I'm no other guy. confident of this very thing that he who began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ the Bible says in Romans 9 and 33 whoever believes on him will not be put to shame the Bible says in Psalms 34 and 5 they looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not made ashamed the Bible says in Galatians 6 and 9 and let us not grow weary and well do praising don't quit worshiping don't quit believing don't quit fasting don't quit don't quit yell it out don't quit come on don't quit hallelujah come on and give god some praise Give them a praise all over the building. We bless you, Lord. We magnify you, Lord. We lift you up, God. Everybody else is a liar. Everybody else is a liar. Jesus doesn't just tell truth. He is the truth. He's dependable. He's trustworthy. He is good. He is faithful, and so he's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our hallelujah. He's worthy of our trust. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. And if 
if I was a Betty man, I would take my, my wife, I would take my children, I would take my money, I would take every part of my life, and I bet it on Jesus. I put it all on Jesus. He is faithful, he is consistent, and nobody is like him. He told us multiple times that if we will put our trust in him, we will not be made ashamed. He is not a liar, and he will not lie. Everybody else is lying. Buddha is a lie. Harry Krishna is a lie. New Age thinking is a lie. It's all a lie. But we serve the one true and living God. He is faithful, so we should give him a glory. We should give him a praise. We should give him a hallelujah. We should rejoice, 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 rejoice. Hallelujah. Take a moment and love on somebody. Encourage their heart. Let them know that you're glad that they're here. Come on, somebody may need to hear that word. Somebody may need that hug. Are you ready for something dramatic and powerful for your life? You want to listen to this teaching and make sure that you pay attention. Make sure you get all of the crud out of the way and just watch what God is about to do for you. You got a miracle waiting right there for you. God bless you. I'll see you back after the teaching. to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Come on, that don't sound like it. Are you encouraged? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you to please stand on your feet real fast. If your feet is working, glory to God. If your feet, <laughs> hallelujah. And at this time, I have the pleasure and the opportunity of the introducing to some and presenting to others our amazing, the amazing angel of this house, Bishop Dr. Michael Brown. Can you put your hands together for the man of God? Hallelujah. Oh, okay. All right. Hallelujah. We're going to do the offering. Hallelujah. Come on. We're doing the offering. Give God a praise. We're doing the offering. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. We have multiple ways to give. They're going to put the information up here, but I, I, I told, I said this, I know according to the IRS, they say things like we're giving a donation, but we're not, we're not giving to someone who's poor. We're having the opportunity to exercise and be a part of the economic system of the kingdom of God of sowing and reaping. And so tonight, if you believe the word of God and believe what the spirit of the Lord is saying, you can give and sow. And as you sow, you can trust because God is not a liar. Everybody shout, God is not a liar. Say his word is true. I can trust every part of it. 
And so even when you sowing tonight, you can trust what the Spirit of the Lord has said about sowing. And so you don't need somebody to trick you. You don't need somebody to guilt you into it. You love God. And because you love God, you sow. And because God's natural, God is a giver. As a born-again believer, your first response is to give. And so if you need an offering envelope, please lift your hands. We got wonderful people available to serve you in that way. Glory to God. And then also we have other ways that you can give. You can scan here and if you use cash app we're asking you please put your name there your first name and your last name and if you're and if it's some type of designation put offering or if it's a tithe put tithe in there just so that we know and we can have accurate records for you glory to god hallelujah and then also you can scan there and give to timely but y'all ready to give Hallelujah. And this is why I love the fact that we're a part of Joy Center because we've been taught to give so we don't have to be tricked. We're not a stingy people. Glory to God. We are bountiful, generous people. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so, God, we put our offering in our right hand because we've been taught to give God what's right and not what's, and not what's left. And Lord, even tonight, we refuse to give the government or to give our other jobs the best of our day and leave you with the scraps. God, we give you the best right now, God, in our offering. We give you the best in our praise and our attention to you, God. So bless this seed that we're sowing tonight. Let it glorify you, God. Lord Jesus, let it be a depiction of our heart towards you, of gratitude, Father. And Lord Jesus, we trust Trust your word that you said, and we give, it shall be given unto us. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall you cause men to give into our bosom. So we trust you, we give you glory, God, and we give you praise as we sow our seed. And thank you for our harvest. Come on, sow your seed, hallelujah. And thank God for your harvest. As they, pre as they pass the ground around, you thank God for your harvest, hallelujah. Glory to God. So y'all put your hands together for our wonderful, wonderful man of God, Bishop Dr. Michael Brown, as that song is going around. Are you all here to hear from the Lord? We don't want to hear from a man, do we? We want to hear through a man, but from the Lord. And that's why we're here tonight. And we are in expectation of what God is going to do and what he's going to say. Because I'm telling you, even though we are in shifting times, this is an incredible time and a time for transition. It's a time for transformation. It's a time for change. Because I believe that God is changing you, not from good to better, but from better to greater. Hallelujah. And so I, I don't want to delay the time because I want to give the gentleman enough time. There's enough fire in here that if, if the Holy Spirit just stood up here, if he's just stood, we know the power of God will flow mightily. Glory to God. And I just sense tonight your expectation is high. God will meet you at the point of your expectation. When your expectation is high, that means you're saying, God, I want you to speak to my heart, my family, my future. Because when God speaks into your future, he's, he's preparing you for something incredible. I said something earlier today. I said, when you think about all the things that God has done for you, you need to just thank God and give him praise and glory for what he's done for you. See, in, in, those, in that Thanksgiving, you can't see all the things that he's doing in your future that he's prepared to do through you so that you can see and walk right into your blessing. Uh, uh, Donna, uh, Ron Car uh, Campbell and I did a, a uh, not a podcast, but we just went on air and we just talked about some things and brought some understanding concerning prophecy. But also just a glimpse of what God is doing. I'm here to tell you, I don't care what is happening in the nation. God is doing so much more behind the scenes. 
And I'll tell you what it is. The enemy doesn't want you to see it. That's why the news will never cover how many homosexuals are really being saved. How many drug addicts are really coming to the Lord. And he will never share the abundance of wealth that's coming into the hands of those that are faithful to him. And I mean people who are prospering during this time of inflation. I don't care if there's an inflation, deflation, there is an increase. And God is a God of increase. God is not a God of recession. God is not a God of deflation. He is not a God of inflation, but I'm going to tell you, God is a God of increase and abundance. The devil coming not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came to give you and that more. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the abundant life? Ron Campbell is a friend of the family. Glory to God. He's born again. He loves Jesus. He may be the only true African-American in this place today. Because he was born and raised as a South African. His mother is Jewish. His father, I don't know. I can't remember how many people he were was. <laughs> but he is a true African-American. He became a citizen of the United States. He from, he's from South Africa. He has an amazing story. And I mean, uh, some of the things he shared last time. But just to hear some of the things and miracles that he has seen, can you believe God for a limb to actually just pop out? Well, he saw a limb in, early, in the early part of his ministry, and he said it sounded like a, a, a like a bang, and that leg, and it was a leg. It, the guy didn't have a leg, and it popped out. Y'all don't believe in miracles like that, do you? Well, God is a God of miracles. There is no shortage shortage of his authority and power and great things that he he's doing. In the Bible, we know that a man's hand was withered. And even though you had the Jewish scribes and Pharisees, and, and Pharisees rather, that didn't believe, Jesus said, I'm going to do it anyway. And the withered hand grew out. I'm telling you, this is a season of increase, an amazing increase for the body of Christ. And if you'll say yes, oh, you said it with all your heart. Did you say yes with all your heart? If you, Jesus won't say no. Give the Lord a praise offering and let's welcome Prophet Ron Campbell. Hallelujah. Woo. Man. Hi, guys. Hi, y'all. You, you, you can be seated. You know, uh, I was standing here doing worship thinking to myself, what is different in El Paso? Because when I flew over and coming to land, I saw buildings and new construction and all these different things going up. And I got this epiphany. You know, all this noise about the border and about the border cities and the border towns and how the media so blown this thing into a place of proportion. What it's done is created a generation of, of revenue for your city without you guys even knowing it. And so God's used the negative and turned it into positive for you. And so that's why this city is growing, expanding, and that's why the blessing is coming. And let me tell you this for sure. Nothing the media says can stop God from doing what he does. They can lie, they can spin, they can swindle it, they can spin it. It's not going to stop the word of faith. It cannot. It's not even in the same realm. It's in a different realm. It's in this earthly realm. The word of God is from the heavenly realm. And what does it do? It transforms everything. So I want to encourage you tonight is if you feel negative about the economy and your income, shake it off. Because things are about to change. They're about to change. Listen, let me tell you, I, I'm, I'm involved with consulting with businesses, corporations, and all different kinds of technologies. And I'm very deeply invested in 
uh, what I call blockchain and Web3 technologies. Let me tell you, when that opens up very soon, it's going to change the economic strata. It's going to take a whole new position with money. It's going to change everything for you. So if there's any of you that want wisdom on what God's going to do in this next realm, it's going to be magnanimous. It's going to be a revolution. You know, when you go back in history and you look when they changed from wood to coal, there was a revolution. When they changed from coal to oil, there's a revolution. When they changed from oil to nuclear power and hydrogen power, there's a revolution economically. You need to prepare yourself for these things. It's God's blessing. It's in the earth. The fullness of the earth is the Lord's. So I might, that's just a little bit of an encouragement to you to get your ears tuned to the sound of my African-American voice. I think I may have told you this before in a church in Atlanta. And uh, the, the guy said, well, this brother's from Africa, he's American, and, and he's, 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 he's here now. And the, and the people said, well, you're not black. I said, well, I used to be. They left me in the sun, and I faded. <laughs> my, my, my message to you tonight is, what did God intend you for? No one that is born on this earth or conceived on this earth that's living today or in the past was born without a dimension of purpose, was born without a personality, was born without a mission, was born without whatever God wanted them to be. And there's no two people alike on this earth. Not even identical twins are alike. So you have to understand something, that God did not make a mistake. So I want to share some things with you, if, you, if, if I may. I want to encourage you because this is the most important thing. I love when God shows me something in the Scripture and it just blows my mind. And I thought I knew everything already, but I found out I don't know. How do you search the depths of God? How do you find the depths of all the wisdom and the revelation and the things you put? How do you get, how do you get that deep into it unless the Holy Spirit takes you? So I'm going to start off with, uh, if you go with me to the Word, in Genesis 1:26, and God said, let us make man... In our image, after our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, of the fowl of the air, the cattle, all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. That's good news for fathers with daughters. <laughs> you have dominion over those creeps that come around to visit your daughter, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's my revelation. I used to, I used to scare my, my daughter's boyfriends. And I loved it. It was great. It was good fun. Because you could see the men had no backbone. So, this, this whole thing, what robbed us of our original intent was sin. <clears throat> sin came in and took us out of that position. But, you know, I don't think God was surprised by it because, you know, God has always had a plan. He's always had a plan. And so I think what he wanted to do is he wanted to ingest himself into mankind even more deeply than the thought. And that's why he sent his son to be like a man, to suffer like all points like a man, who gave it this mighty position of heaven and humbled himself and came down to earth and, and walked a life on earth and showed us how to do it God's way. And people hated him for it. But you know what they did? They couldn't throw him off the mountain. He just walked through them. The devil tempted him. They couldn't stop him, couldn't change his mind. That's what God wants for us. So how did Jesus do this? How did he accomplish this reconciliation and restoration for us to be back to God's original intent? It's a powerful concept. Because in sin, we were cut off from God. Right? And we were handed over to the flesh. There was no access for us to come back. Even through, even through Jewish tradition, even through the offerings, the dove offerings, the ash offerings, the blood offerings, none of that could reconcile us to God. <laughs> but yet they want to reinstate those. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Can you imagine bringing sheep into, into the thing and then slaughtering them and having to clean it after us? No, I'm sorry, man. Now, I'll eat the lamb, I'll eat the meat. But I'm not going to clean up the mess. <laughs> so John 19 verse 30 says this, And when he had received and drank, Jesus said, It is finished. Which, with that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Let me just say something to you quickly. 
The Jews didn't crucify Jesus, neither did the Romans. Jesus willingly went to the cross because he knew God's greater plan. He knew the he knew the fact is that what he was doing was reconciling all mankind into the plan and purpose of God. Now, this word, it is finished. In English, it's like, it's finished. It's a fait accompli. But you need to understand, in the Greek and Aramaic, it's a much deeper word. It has a much more profound meaning to it. And here's one of the parts of the meaning. The Greek word is tetlestai. Tetlestai, which is, I am finished with what I came to do, a cry of victory. And it's, it's in three areas. It, it covers three areas. When Jesus said it was finished, those three areas were completely covered. The first one is a legal term. Judgment has been fulfilled and the sentence is fully served. So you're not guilty. The second one's a military term. The battle is won and the enemy is defeated. Done. The third part of that term is a business and an accounting term. The account is paid in full. So those are great concepts, but let's, let's, let's look a bit deeper and see how this was done. How God used Jesus to break the power, the curse of sin of mankind so that you and I could walk in our intended purpose. This is a very prophetic message, by the way. I'm, I'm not sure if you're catching it, but this is very prophetic because it's going to give you an understanding of how you gained your freedom. You know, we all talk about, well, I live in America because we're free. No, we're not free. <laughs> the land of the free where nothing's for free. Yeah. And, and so, so, but in this case, we walk in freedom. And we walk in a much higher plane than just the earthly plane. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places, above powers and principles and rulers of darkness and wicked places. We've been put into our rightful place. We are sons of God. So I just love this. How did he, how did he take control? How did he do this? He died on a cross or a tree to break the curse. Galatians says this. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having been, become the curse for us. It is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Now, there was a purpose in that. Why? Because the initial sin came from a tree. There were, three, there were two trees in the garden, but there were more. But the tree was the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So the first breakdown in the relationship came from a tree. So to redeem that... Uh, he had to do it through a tree. And if you look at the prophetic language, trees speak of leadership and authority. Yeah? Because when Nehemiah went and asked the king to, to go back to Jerusalem to rebuild the walls, he asked for a letter to Asaph, who owned the forest, to get wood to build the gateposts so that there could be coverage in the city, leadership, authority. This is beautiful. God's greatest purpose for mankind was restored back in order. He undid everything that had been done initially by the action of sin. So the first thing that Jesus did, he restored into order back what was God's original intent. Yeah. So if you're sitting here thinking, well, I don't have anything, I'm not anything, I'm nobody, you need to get rid of that deceptive mentality. Because you're more than a conqueror through Christ. You have his attributes about him. You look like him. You sound like him. You know? That's what amazes me when people say, oh, I love Jesus. And then somebody strange walks past you, but you don't love them because how can you love someone you can't see, but you can't love someone you see? Uh, that's scripture, right? So his greatest purpose for mankind is to restore us back into the order that God originally intended us to be. So as we sit here and we are filled with the Spirit, we've been baptized into the body by the Holy Spirit, we've been filled with the Holy Spirit, He lives in us, He, he w works with us, and He leads us and guides us in all truth. So why are we battling the battles we're battling? It's because we don't have faith and we don't believe. You see, the enemy has so convinced us that, that we're not good. 
that we're never going to accomplish anything. You're just like your father. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Have you heard those sayings? Yeah, you're like your mother. And this is what we raised up in. So instead of believing what God says, we believe what the soulish realm says to us. And that's why we need to renew our minds. Okay, so the second portion, why was his hands pierced? Because we stole from the tree. And to break the power of theft, his hands had to be pierced. Now, in this time today, you steal, your hands get chopped off. Not the same principle. He stole from the tree, so that, that was to restore the hands. First, it was to restore the tree. Second, it was to restore the hands. Because we stole from the tree because of disobedience. Yeah. Why were his feet pierced? His feet were pierced to fulfill the, the messianic prophecy that his heel would bruise the head of the serpent. So that was fulfilled. So can you see what Jesus did through the crucifixion? It wasn't just die and rise again. It was a whole bunch of things were reconciled back into the rightful place. And his side was pierced. And we know that the Bible says, as his side was pierced, blood and water flowed. Now, I look at that as the birth canal for the body. Why? Because when you come into the body of Christ, you come in through the blood and through baptism. But secondly, it's because Eve was taken from the rib to reconcile woman into the rightful place. What is the challenge today in our nation? Woman. You see what the enemy is trying to do? Yeah. And, what, and, and the culture, the mentality, the cultural mentality is women are less than. But in Christ, there's nothing about daughters of God. In the New Testament, you don't read about daughters of God. You read of sons because it's the firstborn. In the spirit realm, there's no gender. There's not going to be given in marriage and all that stuff in heaven. Right? And we're living there in principle and walking and living here with the dynamic power of heaven in us. So we should be the firstborn sons of God, right? So, anyway, are you, are you, are you guys following? Am I okay? Bishop, am I okay so far? Uh, the next one was the crown of thorns on his head. To break the curse that God pronounced over the land. So the thorns were about the thorns and thistles that come up when men plant. When men work, when you, when you start a business, the thorns and thistles that come up in your business, Jesus took that curse upon his brow so that that curse of labor and production can be broken. When I look at this and I see the dynamic work that was done on the cross, besides, besides the beating he took, the, the stripes, besides that, Besides carrying that cross, besides that, look at the wonderful things that he's done. And the enemy hates this. Why? Because the more we get a revelation of this, the more we come into liberty and freedom in Christ. When you start understanding that God has called us into a place to have dominion and authority of everything that's on earth because it's his footstool. And so people are afraid to, well, I'm just a bad, I just believe this, I don't believe in the Holy Spirit. Well, it sucks to be you. <laughs> I mean, why do you want to try and behave yourself as a person when you don't have the Holy Spirit trying to make you behave? <laughs> trying to change your value system. You know, when I listen to guys and they, and, they, and they teach about obedience, and you must be obedient. Listen, man, nature of man is disobedience. It is. The fallen nature of man. But when you're in Christ, the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into all wisdom and revelation, knowledge and truth. He's the one that opens up your eyes. He's the one that wakes you up in the morning and speaks to you. He's the one that declares God's purpose to you. There was a psychologist the other day I listened to. He's talking. If you would pray 15 minutes in tongues a day, you would be amazed how your brain changes. And if you've been battling with conditions of your brain, like headaches, 
or mitochondria problems or something, if you were just praying the Spirit for 15 minutes a day, you would start having wisdom, revelation, knowledge, understanding, and health. And you would get rid of this perverted mentality that the culture's indoctrinated you in. Statistically, statistically, they say that America is the dumbest nation in the world. You know why? We've dumbed down our education. Uh, we make it an even playing field for everybody. And, and you can see it when you drive on the road. You, you're not going to believe this. In the city that I live in, they put these turnstiles in where, you know, you come around. I was coming out there, and the lady was coming around it my way. You're supposed to go this way. And she's come this way. And then head-on collision kind of stuff. And then I put my hands up, and she gave me the bird. So I get up, my car, and I walked up and said, do you know that you have to go around that way? I can go any way I want. Okay, well, then you go. Because very soon you'll have a head-on collision and you won't go no more. But the, the, mere, the mere thought that you continue to drive on the right-hand side, that suddenly you're going to change and go around the left-hand side, this just boggles the mind. And time and time and time again, you see, because what it is, it's perception. It's our perception has been affected by this fallen world, by this fallen nature of man. Our perception has been affected. You know, it's, it's not about education. It's really about perception. I mean, I talk to my grandsons. I'm always talking to them about, hey, listen, you guys, you must be aware of your environment. Pay attention to what's going on around about you. Don't listen to your friends. They don't care about you. Don't, don't act out for your buddy so you can have a rep. Because that rep will get you into jail and get them free. Because this peer pressure stuff that goes on in schools is terrible. Education system is defunct. Healthcare is defunct. Our, our, our political leaders, they all need to go into a mental hospital. All of them. Or in jail, one of the two. But can you see there's a degradation of society? It's a systematic thing. It's planned. It's been plotted. Now, if you're trusting in the economy or you're trusting in that stuff, I'm going to tell you, you're in trouble. But if you're trusting in the Lord, and God will make a way for you where there is no way because he's, he's covenanted to you. He's gone to all the effort of putting his son through all the stuff so that you and I can walk in liberty and set free in our minds. I, I, just, I just look at it and I think to myself, Little Lord, for years I walked in such a mental warped mind. And when God delivered me from myself, because it was me, it was myself, it was selfish, self-centered. There was no humility in me. You know, can I tell you a story? Years ago, just after I got saved, we had this production in our church called The Bride. It was done by a couple here from America, Donnie and Reba, Rambo, Maguire. And I was Jesus Act One because I had long hair. I qualified. <laughs> so they hang me up in a cross, about 30 foot up in the air, got an ephod on. Monday night, everything's good. Tuesday night, everything's good. Wednesday night, my ephod falls off. And I'm hanging on this cross. And the guy in the spotlight is dozing. And you just hear, Oh, through the whole audience, 1,500 people. And I'm hanging there, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, God, what the heck? I mean, all my junk was out in public. From the whole church and all the public. I was devastated. When that cross eventually came down, and I went to the, to the change rooms, I just said to the Lord, Lord, Why? I mean, Janet Jackson had a wardrobe failure, which wasn't so bad, but for me, this was a total, total cultural war failure. <laughs> and the Lord said, I wanted you to feel and taste the humility my son tasted. Because I want you to remember, when you go out and you talk to my people, you have to stay humble. So I remember that because I'm still, I'm still got some PTSD because of that. <laughs> 
How did Jesus accomplish this in 2 Corinthians 5, 18, 20? All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. The reason why Jesus did this is to reconcile us to God and so that we could go out and reconcile others to the Lord as well. Because we are walking testaments, we're ambassadors of the kingdom. And how do you function as a reconciled person? John 14 says this, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, with whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of all that I've said to you. The Holy Spirit is the one who's going to direct your path. He's going to lead you. He's going to teach you. Now, I find it strange today in the church when, the, when, the, when Revelation 19 verse 10 says, The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. How most Christians don't believe in, b- believe in it because they feel it's like, oh, well, that passed away. How can the very giftings that God put in the church in the process pass away, the very giftings that are there to accomplish you and educate you and equip you and train you to be a saint? How you, education's not going to make you a saint. If it was, look at the universities. I mean, we wouldn't have these people protesting. <laughs> you know what I mean? So education is not the, the be-all and end-all. What the be-all and end-all is, is to know who you are. Find out what God's intent for your heart was for your life. You know, when I was younger, my intent was to do as much damage as possible. Give me a rifle, send me out there, show, point me to the enemy and let me go. Give me enough ammo, I don't care, I'll eat off the land and I'll take them out. And I did. But that mentality doesn't work. Because what it does, it curses you. You know? Because what happens, what, is, what does death do? Why seek ye the living among the dead? And I mean, that's what the whole mission was, to go out and to do damage to people for the sake of my government. People that are just humans that are trying to live and we don't want to live under oppression and we will order to go and kill them. Come on. And you know what? It almost drove me to killing myself. Because the guilt and the condemnation and the blood guiltness for taking lives was on my life. And I went through hell trying to get free. And I was at the place where I was going to go and end my life in a graveyard. And I'm, I'm, God bumped into me and fell, dropped me on the floor through a prophetic word from Kim Clement. Dropped me on the floor and stuck me to the ground. And stuck me there for hours. I went into hypothermia and my life passed before me. Every day from my birth, I saw everything about my life. So there was no saying, I didn't know, I, didn't do, I, I couldn't be a narcissist to God and say, it wasn't me, I didn't do it, it wasn't me. Because we all point out him, it's because of so and so, it's because of my mother, my father, the him, the, all those decisions I made myself. I couldn't stand there when he's showing me my life and say, that wasn't me, it was because of my dad and my mom, and because I got that beating, I did that. And I went through this whole process of my whole life till that very moment. And all I heard from the Lord was, I forgive you. You know how freeing that was? Because what it did, it brought all that and put it under blood. Who the Son has set free is free indeed. And you know, the anxious longing of creation was eagerly for the revelation of the sons of God. It doesn't say daughters, it says sons. This world is waiting for you to engage and connect with your intent and your purpose, taking your gift of whatever it is, prophecy, ministry, teaching, pastoring, hospitality, whatever it is, and to go out there in a spirit of humility and grace and impart yourself into people. Pour yourself into them like God poured himself into you. Take them and baptize them. Fill them with the spirit. You know, there was time in South Africa when I was involved with a surgery one day, and I'm not sure if I told you the story before. And I was in this operating theater with this, in this Hindu hospital. All these Hindu gods all over the place. You know, Shiva, Hanuman, Dinesh, all these different funny monkey-looking things. And the whole surgical team were all um, from Asia. And the, the head doctor was the, the top brain surgeon in the world. 
And we were in this operating theater. I was, I was connecting up pain control analgies to this, this lady. She had a subdural hematoma. And they were operating. They took the top of her skull off. And in the middle of the procedure, she died. And they, they did everything they could to revive her, but she didn't revive. And so they took it the time. They declared they took the gloves off and walked out. And I'm busy unconnecting this instrument of mine. And the Holy Spirit says, take her feet. Uh-uh. <laughs> this, uh-uh. I spent two, two and a half million dollars on equipment, and this is the only contract I have. And if I, take, if I touch these feet and this woman rises from the dead, I'm losing my business. <laughs> uh-uh. Where was my mind? It was back in that old state. And eventually I felt overwhelmed, and I grabbed this lady's feet, and I said, in Jesus' name. And the monitors kicked on and started to go again. And uh, they all came rushing back. And as they stabilized her, the surgeon looked across the table. And I'm trying to... <laughs> I'm trying to hide. <laughs> and he points to me and says, you, in my office afterwards. And I said, you see, God, I've just lost all this business. So I went to the recovery room to make sure she's okay and make sure the pain control is good. And then I sort of ambled my way up to his office and sheepishly sat down and... Next minute, he opens the door. He said, come inside. Close the door. And now I'm, I'm really panicking. And he sits on his desk. He says, sit down. And he said to me like this, in, 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 who is your God? I said, beg your pardon. Who is your God? Uh, what did I say? Uh, what did I say, God? What did I say? Tell him. Oh, God, I'm going <laughs> to... You know, it's, it's dangerous, Lord, it's dangerous. I'm in, the, I'm in enemy territory right now. Tell me, I have been searching the one true God. Who is your God? I said, my God is the Lord Jesus Christ. And I was sweating. And he said, he said to me, he said this to me, I want to meet your God. I want to meet your God. So I said, okay. And I just stood there and wondered, God, what do I do? He said, I don't know what to do. I was, I was so flustered. I was so panicked because I was thinking about the worst things. I wasn't thinking about the possibility that this man wanted an encounter with heaven. And I was thinking of myself. And I took his hands and I started to weep and pray for him. And man, I, he went down on his knees and I went down on my knees with him. And we prayed and I asked him to follow me. And I asked him to invite Jesus into his heart. And I asked him to denounce all 300,000 gods. And to declare with his mouth, there is no other God but Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Son of God, the true Son of God. And then I took him to the bath and I baptized him in his bath. And you know what? Within a week... My business exploded because he was the training doctor at 10 hospitals, and they all, all called me to bring my stuff into the hospitals, and they all wanted me to scrub with them in surgery. And I wasn't a doctor surgically. I was a pharmacist. So my business, they had to have, please come to my house and fetch me 2 o'clock, escort me to the hospital to scrub with the doctors when they had surgeries. And God exploded my business. Because I, I decided to think on a different realm. The realm that I was born into by the Spirit. The realm that you've been born into by the Spirit. Where everything is viable. Prophecy, evangelism, teaching, pastoring. The gifts of the Spirit, all nine. The fruit of the Spirit, all nine. Everything that the Word says is valid in that realm that you've been called into. You didn't just go there because you thought, well, I've got nothing to do. Let me go and see if I can find Jesus. No, you were called before I knew you. Before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you, says the Lord. I knew you, and I ordained you. I set you apart as a prophet, as a teacher, as an evangelist. You've all been set apart. The original intent for you was not just to be a motor mechanic. The reason intent for you was to use your gift of motor mechanics so you could touch people who came in with broken cars. The reason why you have a, a, a ministry of administration is so you could help people do what they need to do. And you can become an ambassador to them. 
The reason why you have a nursing degree is because you can pray for the sick. The reason why you work in finance is because you can break the power of the spirit of poverty on people. You can be that ambassador of Christ. The reason why you're in publish publications is because you can tell the truth in media. Right? The reason why you teach your school because you can teach the next generation the truth. The reason why you have a restaurant and you bake stuff and you do stuff is so people can taste your stuff and see that the Lord's good. That's why. El Paso is changing because of you. The media try to do their thing, but God undermined them because of you, because of your prayers, because of messaging, the ministry that is traveling through you. You know? And it's only just begun. Oh, believe me, we're in a tight year this year. It's an economic year as well as it's a political year. But let me tell you something. God's going to give us a surprise. And don't think it's, don't think it's going to be one of the guys that you think. It may not be. It may be somebody else. Maybe Jesus comes before then. <laughs> the chariot of the Lord. Hey, you know, after the um, eclipse, I read this one thing where a guy was saying, oh, the eclipse is going to be the rapture of the church. And so after the eclipse... I called my buddy. I said, hey, are you, are you, do you have a spiritual body? No. I said, neither do I. He said, are you disappointed? I said, I'm very disappointed. He said, why? I said, the reason why I'm disappointed is because I believe that somebody said we'd be raptured. <coughs> I was expecting a spiritual body. I was just joking, actually. <laughs> so many conspiracies and lies come because people are open to receiving a lie. Let me say something to you about a woman in the garden. I think I may have shared this with you guys last time. Because Eve was not present when God spoke to Adam, Adam probably had to tell Eve, don't eat from that tree. Okay? It didn't come firsthand. Because Eve did not see God create in the garden like Adam did because she was in Adam. She didn't see that physically with her own eyes. So she didn't believe. So she didn't realize that when the serpent was speaking to her, that was a created being. Right? But she believed him. Because why? Why did she believe him? Because she did not know the truth. And so she became beguiled. Oh, yeah, Adam was with her. He should have said, hey, honey, listen, we're going to have snake pie tonight. We're not eating apple pie. And it should have been dealt with there and then. But the bottom line is because she worshipped the creature rather than the creator, she became beguiled. Now, I was talking to Bishop about this today, and I'm going to drop this in here for free. Is that okay, Bishop? I was telling him about my testimony about martial arts when I got demon-possessed from martial arts. And uh, people that do yoga and martial arts, they're all involved in the spirit of Kai or Chi. It's a demon. And they are possessed, but they don't know it. Because the minute you do the down dog and all those other things that you do in yoga, and the minute you do the stalk or the crane or the kia, when you're that in martial arts, you are worshiping that deity or that animal. And beyond that animal is the spirit. Because what it says in Romans, it says, God will hand them over to the depravity of their own minds. And they worship graven images and what else? And animals. <laughs> and yet all the churches are doing hot yoga and goat yoga and dog yoga. And, <laughs> and, uh, and this may offend you, but that's okay. Because, you know, the Bible says offense must come. And if this offends you to wake you up, it must come. Well, I, only, well, I do Christian, uh, Christian karate. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> So the minute you go into Carter, the minute you do any of the movements, you're enacting the dragon. And how did that work? If you go and look at the history of it, you go and look at Kai or Chi, a Buddhist monk. He went up to the mountain to seek enlightenment so that he could stop the Chinese military from killing the Buddhists. And he had a visitation from a dragon. And he came down with the art of Carter, 
the art of technical open hand fighting and defense mechanisms. So all those, Tai Chi, Kwan Do, all the stuff, all same spirit. And parents put their kids in that to help them discipline them. <laughs> yeah, you let a demon spirit discipline your child. Now, it's offensive, and I'm sorry. I, I just have to be truthful with you. Because whom the Son has set free is free indeed. And listen, God does not want you to tolerate demons. I was telling Bishop today, I was in a church in La Jolla, um, California. And I told the pastor, I said, there's something wrong with your church. He said, what do you mean? I said, there's something not right. I said, tell me about your church. He said, well, we have the associate pastor, what he does. He's, he's, uh, he believes in David's army and he's training all the people like an army. I said, oh, cool, okay. How does he do it? He said, well, he cleans all the chairs out and then they come and do martial arts in the church. <laughs> I said, okay, that's your problem right there. Uh, he said, well, I don't know that. He said, but I'll give you permission to confront it. So the next morning, the church was full and I got up and told my story about how when I was 12 years old, after my father beat me and threw me in my room. I had a poster of Bruce, Bruce Lee on my wall from the movie Enter the Dragon. And that thing came... Whoosh, into me and from that day nobody jacked with me I became totally demon possessed at 12 and you know when I got set free when I was 38 years old 26 years of torment and that thing almost drove me to kill myself and here's what I want to say well, something else I want to say to you so while I was teaching this this guy gets up and walks down the front and as I could walk in towards me Holy Spirit says to me, stand dead still, don't move. And I saw him coming. Now, all my military things are kicking in inside of me. I want to, I want to, you know, I want to minister the throat punch. <laughs> Fivefold ministry, you know, I'm looking for. <laughs> and he comes walking down, and I'm standing dead still, and he stops in front of me, and I look at his face, it looks like a shogun. And he goes, Oish! and he does a wash magiri to my head. It's a kick to the head which is fatal, by the way. And his foot stuck here, stopped here. And he stood like this with his leg up in the air for 20 minutes. And I stepped away and I said to the people, what about this is Jesus? It's a spirit. All came down to the front. And of course, the elders of the church went crazy on me, rebuked me. But the bottom line is I told the truth. And you know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I don't know why I shared this tonight. I wasn't going to share it, but I feel there are some of you here that need to repent because that's a block. I'll tell you why. Because when Kai, or Chi, the Buddhist monk, he took an oath of poverty so that he could go up in the mountain to get enlightenment. He humbled himself. He took poverty on. And what he did with the poverty, he took on a spirit of premature death. Because most people who are involved deeply in martial arts die prematurely. So the bottom line is, I'm here today to tell you that Christ did all this on the cross so you could be free, so you don't have to involve yourself with an ancient spirit. <laughs> Jesus will be your defense. And the Holy Spirit will orchestrate where you're in places where you won't be attacked or have to defend yourself. You just have to teach yourself to hear Him. My sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. Yeah. Know him. If there's anything you learned and heard from me tonight, is know that so Jesus paid the ultimate price, and he broke every single curse that was generated in the Garden of Eden. There was not one left. So you should not be living under any form of curse or any form of oppression or any form of de demonization or anything like that. If you are redeemed, saved, washed in the blood, baptized, doing communion, and basically living your life praying and interceding and being baptized in the Holy Spirit, you should be walking in the ultimate power. Ultimate power. We're not seeing miracles in the church today because the church has sold herself into slavery. She sold herself to false doctrine. She sold herself to be a big organization rather than truth tellers. Yeah? We don't want the Holy Spirit in here because we don't want to offend the people. I will offend you as much as possible because I don't want to offend the Holy Spirit. So all I'm saying to you is we want 
revival in America. With the condition the bride is in right now, we are not going to have revival until they humble themselves and repent. Until they, they admit their wicked ways, ask God to forgive them and repent and humble themselves. And then tell the truth and set the captive free. How do you feel now? <laughs> you guys, you're all looking at me like, <laughs> like a cow looking at a new gate. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I, I have to tell you the truth. I can't lie because being a prophet, I have to say what the Spirit of God has put in my heart. Because I know God has the best for you. Every one of you. You know, if you're involved in addiction, He wants to set you free. If you're involved in an abusive relationship, He wants to set you free. He wants to break the power that the enemy has, the hold that he has over your life. If your family has been battling sickness and disease forever, he wants to set you free. He wants to break the generational iniquity of slavery and Freemasonry. You know, I was um, down in Houston this past week and uh, at doing this meeting with this group of businessmen. And the one businessman's wife asked me, there's this lady that is demon-possessed. Everybody prays for her, but she can't get free. Would you go with me to pray with her? And I said, okay, let me pray and ask the Holy Spirit. So I prayed and I came back to her. I said, the Holy Spirit has said no. She said, why? I said, I don't know. He knows. So that night she had a conversation with me again. I said, the reason why I'm not going to pray for her is because there's a man involved in her life who has authority over her life who is a witch. And so she called the woman and said, is there a man? Yes, there's a man in her life that, that had a um, power of attorney over her, had all her accounts, have a will, have an insurance policy, all that. And she was, he, he was the guy that was keeping the demon possessed. And so we confronted him, or she confronted him on the phone to get the stuff away from him. And the next day when, we, when she went out there to go find out if the woman's okay, the woman was murdered. The man killed her, shot her in the head and you know you know how silly this is the police go and arrest the guy and they let him go because they didn't have enough evidence and I said to the detective am I stupid he said what do you mean I said gunshot residue smells you walked in the room you could smell it she was shot in the head blood was out there you could see there was evidence but they let him go and now they can't find him see that's how the devil works he connects himself to people and he just brings them down through different people. So be careful. Be careful of the friends and the relations you have. If somebody's pulling you down, stop. You know, a couple of years ago when I was involved in Washington, D.C., I came home from a trip once. My wife looked at me and said, you know, I don't know who you are anymore. You just like the people you spend time with. And I said, no, what do you mean? She said, you, you're vengeful, you're mean, you're judgmental, you're critical, and you're arrogant. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. She said, you need to go and pray. You need to go and pray now. Yes. <laughs> you know, when mama speaks, you know, you know. So I went, got in the shower, started praying. The Spirit of the Lord told me, you have over 150 unholy alliances. I don't know what that was. So I said, and off the show, I said, well, the Holy Spirit told me I've got over 150 unholy alliances. She said, you know what that is? No. She said, you've made agreements with people. You've promised people stuff. You've made transactions with them. You'll give them the word of the Lord. They'll give you money. She said, because God told me that. And I asked him what that meant. This is what he told me. So I had to sit down with, with a pad. And I wrote out, and the Holy Spirit gave me the names. Of every single one, 150 people. Yeah. And then they had to declare a decree of divorce with each one. Each one separately. Because they all came in through a different pathway. And each one separately. And then when I finished it, then I had to have communion and ask God to forgive me and cleanse me and wash me. And you know what? It wasn't a week. I started to get letters from those people. Sending, this is our final transaction. We won't be sending any more money. Huh, what's that say? I didn't tell them. I didn't call them. 
the spirit in them knew that the umbilical was cut off. Beware of unholy alliances, unholy agreements. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Everything above this is evil. And I tell you, man, I suffered off that for a couple of months because I had nowhere to go. No ministry, no opportunities, nothing. But God brought me down and he humbled me again. And when that season of pain was over, he showed me that I have something new for you. I have something greater than anything you ever tried to do yourself. I have something that I, I've called you to. Not something that you developed yourself. Because with, hey, I've got influence of people. I'm going yeah, to work it, you know. Yeah? And what I did is the phone rang, and before I knew where I was, I was consulting in the oil field, and I was doing it. wonderful opportunities, contracts, and everything came in. And within a space of three, six months, God restored every dime that I lost, plus more. So why? So if you can get the crux of everything I shared tonight, it's about getting back to the original intent that God had for you as a person. Why you were created. You're not just here to suck oxygen. You're not an oxygen thief. You're here because there's a divine purpose on your life. This, and, and, the, and the nation needs you to come into line with your divinity, with the divine expression that Christ has in you. He has a divine expression in you. In every sphere that you have influence in, that's where your expression is. Yeah? Denzel Washington says, I love Denzel Washington when he says things. He says, uh, I am in the place I am right now because God's put me there. I'm not here tonight because Bishop invited me. I'm here tonight because God has sent me with a prophetic message to the church saying that if you're praying for your nation to change, change begins here with you first. And then it's going to change the church. And then it's going to change the neighborhoods. Then it's going to change the city. And then it's going to change the state and the nation. But it begins here in our hearts first. So if there's anything that has you captivated... Anything has you trapped. It could be debt. It could be poverty. It could be shame. It could be guilt. It could be hatred, anger, malice, unforgiveness. It could even be murder. I want you to stand. Because we're going to pray that the Holy Spirit will set you free. And there's nothing to be ashamed about. There's nothing to be ashamed about. I'm going to set the captive free. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to just put your hand on your heart and... I don't know what battle you're in. I don't know what journey you're on. I don't know what your pain is. I don't know if it's physical, emotional, if it's economic, if it's family relationships, if it's business. I don't know your pain. But he does. So as you put your hand on your heart, I'm going to pray with you. And I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to move on you right now. And I'm going to ask him to break whatever thing needs to be broken and sever whatever needs to be severed. And restore whatever needs to be restored so that you can get back into what God originally intended you to be. So Holy Spirit, I thank you right now as you brood upon these people. These are your people, Father. They don't belong to us. They're yours. You brought them and you bought them with a price. You redeemed them by the blood of the Lamb. And I'm asking you tonight to touch every single one. Do not leave a stone unturned. Do not leave any of them in the current situation that they're in right now. Bring them into a much deeper dimension of authority, recognition, understanding, and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Father, I just thank you right now. They know what the problem is, and you can express it yourself with your mouth. You can ask the Lord to do what you need to do. And I'll just pray continually that the Holy Spirit would move upon you, that he would change your heart, he would change your mind, that he'd bring you out of the place that you're in into a wide expanse to a much more peaceful, joyful place, a place that he ordained for you to walk in, to live in, because he loves you. He knows you. He's your father. He's your Abba. You sing the song about him. You sing that that's all you need. You need him. And tonight, you don't need me. You need him more than anything. So, Father, I thank you tonight 
<coughs> that anything that is associated umbilically or connected them umbilically or tied them to something that's not of you or not of your doing or not of your provision, that, Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, tonight you would just sever that bond. And you set the captive free. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to drink some water first, if you don't mind. You're welcome to sit. I mean, did any of you feel something happen while, we, while you prayed? I tell you, we go through life and we have battles. And sometimes the biggest battle is us, ourselves. Not recognizing what we really need. So I, I just want to encourage you all, you know, be honest with yourself. I, I on a daily basis have to deal with myself because I am the most broken of all. You know? I only do this because I'm so grateful for him pulling me out of the pit and giving me the opportunity to be something that is better than I was. Something that is Immaculate. God is so amazing. You know, I had this picture the other day in my mind where I was sitting praying of uh, an artist that in his early days he was painting these pictures and somewhere along the line uh, the pictures were sold and one day he was walking past this auction house and he saw this um, the painting, he originally, his first original painting it was all tattered and torn and all dark and the frame was all dark and he went in and he looked at his first his first creation and by this time he was a well revered respected artist worldwide and he looked at his first production and he stood there in tears and he, he realized that the owner of the auction place had no understanding of the value in this painting, how valuable it is. It was his first painting. And he would sell his painting for millions. And it was his first painting, which could have been worth millions. And he bought it back from the auctioneer. And what he did is he took it home to himself. And he cleaned the frame, fixed it up. And he cleaned the painting so it could become brilliant again. And healed and restored it. And when I was thinking about that, God said, that's what I've done with you. You were my first edition. You were my first masterpiece. You see, every one of you is his first masterpiece. Because you're all different. And we're all his first masterpiece. And some of us may be a bit dark and tattered, and we may have a little bit of shaking going on in our frame, you know. But he's busy restoring us. And I just had this great, great, great expression the other day where, and this is things God shows me all the time. I'm just blown away at the things He shows me. I'm saying, God, why are you so good to me? And I was going through this uh, in Colossians, it says, and Jesus holds all things together in Himself. And so I started to research that whole concept of how we're held together by Christ. There's a, um, a, a protein molecule in our body called laminin that looks like a cross. It's a protein molecule that holds your organs together. And then I started to look at the DNA strain. And the DNA strain, they did a scientific research on it, and they found the numbers in the DNAs, 10, 6, 5, and 6. Then they took gematria, the Jewish words that relate to those numbers. And this is what they came up with. Your DNA my DNA and every mankind's DNA has yeah huh. way every time you breathe yeah way yeah way you don't belong to Satan your DNA is Christ and you know the funny thing is the two the two parts of the DNA the both the both sixes in the number, both sixes in the number look like nails. And what's six? Number flesh. 
nailed number of flesh. In your DNA, the flesh has already been nailed. Because his name dwells in you. Do you want to tell me that we're a mistake? No, no, we're not a mistake. We're scientific. We're technological. We're experiential. We're relational. We're romantic. We're, we're all the things that he is. So I just want to encourage you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, look at yourself the way He looks at you. Ask Him to show you how He sees you. You know, being called a prophet is very difficult because you have challenges against you. Always. Always. And I used to be very upset about it. I would want to go and defend myself. And God said one day, no, I'm your defense. You go and do what I tell you to do, I'll defend you. And so I had guys come against me to try and stop me, call me into a meeting, accuse me of something I never did. Couldn't bring an accuser to confront me. And Bishop Garlington, I called him. He said, he spoke to them. He said, Ron, get up, dust your feet off and walk out. I dust my feet off and walked out. You know, within a month, all five of those guys in that meeting all had calamity hit them. One guy had an accident. Him and his wife were in a hospital for three months. Other guy's wife left him for another woman. Other guy's out of the ministry. Another guy had to give up his job and go uh, get another job because he lost his money. And the other guy basically is altogether went into homosexuality. You know why? Because Satan was cursed to eat the dust of the earth. So when you dust your feet off, you're done with the flesh. You're walking. I'm just, I'm just ad, ad living as I'm waiting for the Holy Spirit to speak, Bishop. Is that okay? So, I don't know if you can feel the tension in there, but I can feel it. There's a tension here because I believe God's getting ready to do some real phenomenal things between the up tonight and tomorrow. So, I just want to encourage you right now. Just start praying in the Holy Spirit. Let's start praying in the Holy Spirit. Those of you that can, just start praying in the Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There was Sandria Makushiana. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Thank you, Lord, for the power of the Holy Spirit. I feel that somebody's out battling with an infirmity. It has something to do with your heart. I just feel the Holy Spirit wants to heal you tonight. Are you here? Is it you? What's going on? Okay, so you have cardiotachy. Yeah, Father, I just break the power of this situation going on in your body right now, in your heart, Lord. I just break it in Jesus' name, and I declare today, Father, that a new mindset is going to come to her. Even, Father, today we speak to cholesterol, we speak to blood pressure. Father, we even speak to COPD right now as well. We break the power of this pressure that's on her chest, Lord. And we thank you today. We just speak to the liver to come to homeostasis and to heal her right now, Father. Even the imbalance in her sugar in her body, Lord, today. We just thank you that you give her a revelation of how to change her behavior as well as how to be healed in Jesus' name. So, Father, we release the power of the Holy Spirit on her right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I break the power of fear of death in Jesus' name right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Anybody else got a heart? There was more than one. Is there anybody else? When the Holy Spirit gives us stuff, I, I need to take care of it because it's been given for a purpose. What, what's your problem? Okay, do you want to raise your hands? Raise them higher. Surrender. So, Father, we just speak to the heart. Uh, Pastor, can I just get you? Would you put your hand on the heart for me, please? So, Father, we just release a creative miracle on the heart right now. We break the power of this heart murmur. Father, your word says that you are the strength of our heart right now, that you are strengthening our heart, that you are doing a new thing within us. And I just thank you today, Father, that uh, this is a generational curse. I break the power of it now in Jesus' name. I break the power of iniquity of perversion that came against their bloodline. And I just release it from it now in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, that her heart is strengthened. I thank you, Lord, that that left ventricle today is healed in Jesus' name. And I thank you for the power of your word to go into her body. Your word says 
that love covers, love conquers, love overcomes. We release love into every mortal cell of our body, into every mortal cell within our heart, Lord. And I thank you that the heart-brain connection is strong. So, Father, I thank you in Jesus' name to heal her right now, to touch her right now, and to make her breathe a sigh of relief in Jesus' name. And I just release your fear as well in Jesus' name. You're not going to have congestive heart failure, okay? I release it off you now in Jesus' name. mitral valve yeah so you see the Holy Spirit is speaking okay so Father right now we just thank you have you had it replaced or you need to have it replaced they want to yeah it's too expensive anyway <laughs> you'd rather buy a seven new Cadillac <laughs> Holy Spirit I just thank you today that you just restore her mitral valve And I just release the anointing of the Holy Spirit on right now. I thank you, Father, that you're healing the pains in her back and even in her kidneys now, Lord, in Jesus' name. I just thank you, right, the Holy Spirit, that you just wash over right now in peace. And, Father, even as you do that, Father, today, you even do surgery on her heart right now. And I thank you, Lord, you're restoring her mitral valve right now, Lord, that the flaps will function correctly, Father, that her blood pressure will be right. Even now, Lord, that she won't get exhausted and be out of breath when she walks. And the pain in the back will be broken in Jesus' name. I'll put my hand on your back, okay? So, Father, right now, I just break the power of this thing that came in when she was a young girl, Lord, in Jesus' name. And I break the power of prognostication that doctors have prognosticated over in Jesus' name. And I release the anointing on in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, atrial fib. Okay, raise your hands. Thank you, Lord. Today, we just speak to atrial fib. We command you to come into line, to let the sound, the frequency of your heart be healed right now. Uh, a trauma came in, a trauma came in when you were younger that affected your heart. You could, you're holding that trauma within your heart. Now break the power of that trauma of betrayal. I break the power of that trauma of betrayal in Jesus' name. And I just release the healing on you right now. And these, no, go, take it, take it. Just, you know, they'll be on you. They'll catch you. Know, Father, just right now, just heal her. Right now, I just heal the betrayal. When that wound of betrayal came in, that wounded your heart. And I just release it right now in Jesus' name. Just lay there for a minute. Let, let the Holy Spirit minister to you. Let Him touch your heart. Let Him minister to you. Just relax. Be at peace. Yeah. So what heart trouble do you have? The left ventricle. The side, yeah? Oh, the left side. So it's across your lungs, your heart. You have problems breathing? Okay, Father, I just release the anointing right now to break the power of perversion of his life. Father, right now, just heal him. Father, I just heal, cleanse his eyes and his ear gate. Right now, I break all forms of lust of him, perversion. Father, right now, pornography, masturbation, in Jesus' name, that you cleanse his soul and his spirit. Father, that you reset, that you reset his belief systems, Lord Jesus. Thank you right now for his life. Father, I just thank you today. All shame is broken off him. And I thank you, Lord, even intimacy would be restored to him, Lord, in Jesus' name. And no perversion would be uh, allowed around his life anymore. Father, I just release it on him in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. I just break the power of abandonment. Lord, I break, I break off this woman today, the thoughts of suicide. I just release the healing anointing on her right now. Father, she's alone with her kids. Family have turned their back on her, Lord. Father, today, she's got a new family. This is her family. And I thank you right now in Jesus' name to heal her, to touch her. Fill her with the Holy Spirit right now, Lord. Bless her kids, Lord. And Father, just break off her the abandonment right now and the hopelessness and worthlessness. I pray in Jesus' name. Is it possible for some of the mothers of the house to come pray with her and hold her and just minister to her, just give her some love? 
some of the mothers. So, Father, I just thank you today. Your word says that your heart will not fail you for fear. So, Father, we just take authority over fear right now and death, premature death and heart failure right now. We just command you that you would lose hold of her. We speak to your sinus rhythm. We speak to the frequency of your heart right now. We thank you right now, Father, too, for circulation within our body, for the arteries to be softened. Lord, for even healing to come to our mind. The deprivation of oxygen, Father, has caused our mind sometimes to go soft or she's forgotten things. And I just release healing upon our mind and our heart. I thank you today for uh, flesh healing in, in, in the heart, Lord. And I ask you in Jesus' name to just touch her. In Jesus' name. of the enemy and abuse and fear fear that you'll never find your purpose you'll never find your relationship and things that set you off I just speak to the triggers of her mind the triggers of her subconscious mind right now Lord I just release the healing anointing and I release power on her right now and I thank you Father for healing her right now bringing a new dimension to our mind right now. And I thank you, Father. And you're not going to fail. Okay, and there's this concern in you that you're going to fail. And, and I just see people rejecting you because of the fear that you have. They feel it and they reject you. So, Father, I thank you today that I break the power of post-traumatic stress disorder off her right now. And I thank you, Lord, that today you sever all forms of abuse from her. Abandonment, loneliness, helplessness, Lord. And even the thoughts of suicide, I break that off her right now in Jesus' name. I thank you for healing power on her body right now and her mind. And I thank you to fill her right now with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I encourage some of your younger people to get around her and pray with her. You know, the biggest thing that people suffer today is loneliness. And you can be in a crowd and you can be absolutely lonely. So just gather around and just love them and pray for them. Don't be afraid. This is a, we're family, right? Yeah, sweet family, just love, just love her. Just give her some time and affection. Hi there. What's the journey? What's the... All right. <laughs> yeah. Is it? Yeah, Father, I just release the anointing now and break hypothyroidism. I speak even now to a liver. I speak to a thyroid, Lord. I speak to even the female hormones right now. I thank you, Lord, today that you break the power of this infirmity of her body right now. Oh, I see this. This is a generational curse. I break it off you right now in Jesus' name. It comes from your ancestry. I just release it off you right now. And I thank you, Father, too, that even now it will not affect the eyes, it will not affect the ears, and neither will it affect the body, Lord. I just release the hormonal balances to be restored right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Do you have children? Are you married? Do you want children? And the thyroid is stopping you from getting pregnant, right? Yes, that's what's stopping. Can I just get past? Can I get you one to pray? I want you to lay hands on you. Uh, hypothyroidism actually stops your hormones from functioning correctly. And it stops women from getting pregnant. And so I'm, is it okay? For, is this your, your lady? Is it okay if I pray for her? So, Father, I just want to make sure, okay? <laughs> we don't want any unwanted children, right? But we want, we want God to bless your marriage, your relationship. So, Father, we just prepare a womb right now and the seed. Yes, Father, I thank you today that thyroidism is not going to stop her from producing in your nature and your character and her likeness and his likeness and your likeness. 
And Father, even today, I pray for restoration of her hair and of her organs right now in Jesus' name. And we just speak to this generation that you are to loose hold of her womb and even of her cycle, even her reproductive cycle in Jesus' name today. We just release the healing power on that in Jesus' name. And I thank you for my brother, that Father, that he's at peace with this decision and all that the Spirit of the Lord would move upon them as a family. And you bless his business, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. just thank you for my brothers. Father, Jeremy is your son. And Jeremy needs a touch from you. Father, I just break the power of rage, anger. It even comes from his childhood, Lord. I just break that power right now. And I just thank you, Father, where in the past there's been betrayal. Father, even now there's still betrayal. I just break the power of that spirit of betrayal that's been on him where so many people have turned against him. Father, I just thank you that you send out your angels and restore his wife back into the right relationship with him. Heal his heart, heal his soul, heal his spirit, Lord. Father, just open up the doors for him to see what you have for him, the goodness, the favor. And I thank you, Lord, that as you work with him today, we just break the power of a spirit, the division that came through the bloodline in Jesus' name. I thank you today, Father, he's even feeling the tearing of a relationship. And I thank you that you heal the wound within his heart, Lord. Thank you today, Father, that you restore Jeremy. Restore his soul. Restore his mind. Restore his body. Fill him with the Holy Spirit, Lord. Let the joy of the Lord be his strength. <laughs> Father, your word says that rivers of living water will flow from your innermost being. And you understand water, but you can understand the water of the Spirit as it flows through you, as it can wash and cleanse you, as well as it can wash and cleanse others. So walk with Him, pray to Him, and stop looking over your shoulder at the past. You have to live in the now. Faith is now. It's not tomorrow. It's not yesterday. It's now. As you continue to walk in faith now, you'll see God will speak to you. Because the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. So Father, I pray today for Jeremy that he would know you, Lord, like he's never known you before, intimately and deeply, and that change is coming to him and his household in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It seems like we have an automatic healing line. <laughs> what do you need healing for? this woman's mind you cannot have a soul you took everything from her but now we found a thief and the thief has to pay sevenfold return for what is stolen in this lifetime so father i just thank you today that we break the power of this division this warfare that's come against our mind against our body against our life and father we just negate all diagnosis and prognosis from doctors about schizophrenia, about bipolar. We just declare today, Father, that who the Son has set free is free indeed. And Father, today she's free because you've set her free and no longer the torment and the anguish of failure be upon her. And Lord, I thank you today we break off the power of this paralyzing force that's paralyzed her and stopped her personality from coming forth. And I thank you today, Father, that she will not manifest, but she'll be at peace because you are the peace of her life. And just do a miracle in our heart right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Okay. Thank you all. Amen. Okay. Okay. Father, I 
Father, I just thank you right now. We just pray for our spine. We pray, Father, right now for all these nerves in the spine to be restored. Lord, I thank you today that we take authority over this thing that's influencing our body right now. We pray, Father, even for our heart and our soul. Father, she doesn't believe she can be healed because she doesn't believe she deserves it. I break the power of this thing off her right now in Jesus' name, and I declare today that you are healed. And today, Father, I release healing even now on the autonomic nervous system. I thank you now, too, even the vagus nerve has been healed within her body. And I thank you when life comes back into a sensory part of her body, into a nervous system, and even into her mind, Lord. I thank you today as well, Father, that you heal her body right now, that you touch her, Father, bring homeostasis to her liver, and declare today, Father, that you are doing a new thing with her. And it will come soon, and I'll see it. You'll see it. You'll see it, Father. You'll see it. It will come soon in Jesus' name. I release it on right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. So break power of neuropathy as well as fatty liver. I just talked to your liver right now. Come on, your homeostasis. And I, I suggest you do a change in your diet and do a liver cleanse. So, Father, I just release the anointing right now on her body, on her mind. And, Father, even now, I just speak to this thing that wants to cause her to have a stroke. I break it right now in Jesus' name. I break it right now. It's a kundalini spirit. I break the kundalini spirit of your life right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I release healing on you right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, right now. This, the Spirit of the Lord, we fill it with the Spirit of the Lord. Fill it with power and authority in Jesus' name. Yeah, receive it. There it is. Jesus' name. You won't have a stroke. So just know that it's going to be peaceful and God's going to heal your nervous system. And I'll break the power of anxiety of you in Jesus' name. Amen. She just wants a deeper relationship with you. Father, she wants her heart healed from this world. That she can serve you and she can be a messenger for you, Lord. She can speak for you, Father. And you can show her great and wonderful things. So, Father, I just release her and open her spirit up now to hear and to receive the baptism. You know, the baptism of fire in Jesus' name. Baptism of fire to burn out all the old ways, all the old thoughts, all the old ideas, all the old mentalities. Just burn them out right now in Jesus' name, I pray. Yeah, and, and I break the power of that death off you as well that's trying to come against you in Jesus' name. I just command you to lose hold of it right now in Jesus' name. Thank you right now, Father. The anointing of the Holy Spirit. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is on you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah. So I'm going to lay there for a while. Let's stay there for a while. break off the memories and the thoughts and even the programming of childhood trauma, the abuse, the words that were spoken. I thank you, Lord, for the fire of the Holy Spirit that burns out all dross. I thank you, Lord, that the memories are even fade away. And I thank you right now that you touch her, you fill her, and you heal her right now to overflowing. And I thank you, Father, that when she looks in the mirror, she will see herself through your eyes. Not as a failure, not as the things that were spoken over her, but as the things that you speak to her. That she's more than a conqueror, she's more than an overcomer, and she has a heart to serve you, Lord. And I just release the anointing of the Holy Spirit on her and give her prophetic insight, I pray in Jesus' name. sets him off whether emotions as well memories mm. thank you Father 
Father, I break the power of this band that he has around his head. It's a mentality. It's a serpent. I just release him from right now in Jesus' name. I just released and cursed the power of that thing that came in his age when he was younger. It came in through fear and stress. It came in through anxiety. It came in through hearing arguments in your household. Put fear within your spirit. Now break the power of that serpent on you right now that causes this constriction in your brain, even in your circulation. I release healing on you right now in Jesus' name. Fill him right now, Father, with the Holy Spirit. Baptize him in power. Baptize him in the authority of the Lord. Right now, Father, open up a new door of opportunity for him in Jesus' name. And thank you for that, Lord. Just fill him right now. And Father, we just cause these headaches to cease and desist in Jesus' name. So there's a spirit in alcohol called Bacchus. It's a strong spirit that affects people's insides, makes, makes them addicted to alcohol, basically sugar. Father, I just declare the breaking of the power spirit of Bacchus over her mother, her family, her sisters, Lord. Father, instead of them drinking alcohol, give them the new wine. Give them the new wine that comes from Joel's place, Lord. That laughter will be in their midst, Father, and they'll rejoice in the Lord. Father, I pray that you send the word to them today and save them. And set them free from their iniquities, I pray. And bind and break the power of the spirit of alcoholism and back us in Jesus' name. And I thank you for this young woman, that you put a spirit of intercession on her. And a prophetic anointing on her, Lord, that she will see and she'll speak. And that you'll educate her in the things of the Holy Spirit. And Father, she'll speak with wisdom beyond her years in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I break the spirit of poverty in Jesus' name. That declared, where are you from? And before that, just New Jersey. Where's your ancestry from? Ghana, yeah. Okay, because I felt that there was a curse that came from Ghana on your bloodline. And I just break the power that curse of you right now. And I break the power of poverty off you right now. And I just release the healing and anointing upon you right now. And I just say, Today, this ends. And Father, you know what this system has done to her, Father. Today, I call her out of the system into the kingdom. And the kingdom is where provision is and even where a new car is for her, Lord, and a new job in Jesus' name. I just release that healing on her right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay? We're going to go ahead and just let them play, pray for these at 11.30 to 12.00. 30 tomorrow he's going to be here whatever the Lord gives to him then he'll be sharing it with you these will be the last two that were since they stood there go ahead so father just released murder of this family and grief and suffering and pain and doubt doubt that you could protect them as a family I just break the power that thing off them right now in Jesus name I just release healing on her right now and the pain of trauma Lord in Jesus name and I thank you Father that today she would have peace in Jesus name that you just anoint her for peace and fill her in Jesus name in Jesus name Amen so yeah take it it's fine it's good pray against colon issues, especially polyps. 
pray that none cancers, Lord. I pray that you break the power of the cycle of cancer of his bloodline, the family. And Father, I just thank you today, Father, that he has a desire to come closer to you. Father, I pray that you draw him closer, that you bring him into your comfort so he knows you, Father. I just release healing power upon him. I thank you today, Father. That violence against his life is broken. He's had to fight for his life, and I thank you. He doesn't have to fight anymore. And you'll bring him into sonship in the kingdom, Father. He'll know you as Abba, and you'll know him as your son. And I heal him right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me, real fast, before I let him, and we're closing and letting out, uh, some of the things that people need to know is how some sins, some sicknesses, some disease are attached to sins, secret sins. And you cannot get delivered from things when you're in a relationship with demons. It's hard that, that in fact, it will not happen. And so people struggle in that area. There's things we talked about as well. Uh, some things people have in their homes that are attached to people may have things from Africa uh, masks you, you're from South Africa you dealt with some of the witches out there what, some of the things what, what, what would you say to them well can I tell you something yeah. uh, back in South Africa there was a, a local rabbi that was my friend in Seapoint and he called me one day and said uh, Mr. Selichman has uh, a brain tumor and she wants me to go visit her so she said, come with me. Now, she kept a kosher household as a Jewish family. And so we went up, and I sat quietly in the room while the rabbi spoke. And um, so the rabbi turned to me and said, do you have something you want to say to her? And I said, yes. I said, uh, Hashem says, thou shalt have no gods before me, but yet you're laying in the lap of a god. And her headboard was a 15-foot Phoenician Buddha. <laughs> And I said, that is why you have your brain tumor. It's because you're breaking the law. Being Jewish, you're breaking the law. And the rabbi just sat shocked. And then she called her husband and um, asked me to remove it. And when I smashed the head of that thing with a hammer, it had blood in the head. And these, uh, these um, priests that have these places that they do these things over in Thailand and those places, they put blood in those things, but they curse them because they know people come steal them. And so then you take the curse home with you. And in Africa too, all those masks you see of those African faces, those are all demon revelations that come to the people that carve them. That's the demons that visit them. That's the faces of them. You know, a lot of people get things like the, you know, the dream catcher thing as well. That's another thing that people do. And the Kachina dolls and, and uh, even those Catholic candles with the saints on them. They, they have attachments to them. Uh, and there's a lot of things there that you have to pay attention to because demons put themselves inside these things. And normally when people worship them, you know, then the demons go in them. If you get that stuff, they go, oh, look, this is a nice memento or whatever. In the meantime, you bring a curse into your household. Freemasonry, if you have any Freemasonry Bibles, Freemasonry stuff, burn it and repent. Eastern star, all yeah, that crap. All that stuff, yeah. All that stuff is a false, it's false gods, it's false doctrines. And there's even stuff that comes from Africa, like uh, some of the witch doctor stuff that was going on. And you, here's what I noticed. Even the Harry Potter series. Because <laughs> I went and prayed for a young boy that was demon possessed by Harry Potter. And he would fly around the room. His mother called and said, My son's flying around. I said, Are you sure? Isn't he just on the, isn't he hanging on the, on the fan? No, he's flying around the room. Open the door, he's flying around the room. Like Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah? So you have to understand, these, these things are real. You know, people say, oh, it's just, a, it's, just oh, it's innocent, it's, it's just, a, it's real. So if there's something in your house or something that you have from an ancestor or something that gives you the heebie-jeebies, <laughs> that's a sign. You know what the heebie-jeebies are? 
You know, that sort of thing. That's a sign. That's a sign. And so when my dad died, I got a, I got a, a sword that was this big, a Scottish sword from our ancestors, worth fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. And it was passed down to me. And the day I got it, I destroyed it. Because I know what that sword carries. And my family was very upset with me. I said, I'm not going to have it. I'm not going to give it to you other one to destroy it. Because it's going to break the curse. My, my family grew up, and uh, I grew up with people in dream, dream books and all this other stuff. And people may still be attached to things. And this is why when I sense in the spirit, when I'm praying for someone and I can pick up what are they attached to? Little things they have hanging in their cars, uh, things of that nature. And I mean, there are some things they just don't realize. Uh, even we know and found out, of course, cartoons that have a lot of demonic overtones and things of that nature. And people have to be careful of what they're allowing their children to watch as well. So there are a lot of things. And so when we're praying and prophetic words are coming forth, and I'm sensing sometimes uh, some things have to be addressed spiritually that you're dealing with because you can't be free when you're married to it. Uh, some of the demonic stuff. Now, you can't get rid of your husband or your wife if they're, if they're jacked up, but you can pray over that house and pray over stuff and even foods that are offered to gods and things of that nature. Brazilians are good for that. Uh, they lay food at the altar of, and on your doorstep. The Day of the Dead, which is a, a, a great his, uh, Hispanic uh, tradition. Am I right, y'all? Do you know about any of you that are Hispanic? We have some Blacksicans in here as well. So... <laughs> But uh, all kinds of stuff. So tomorrow, uh, we'll be just dealing with that tomorrow. In this one hour, he's got to catch a plane. But he has some incredible testimonies. We, but he, he's just going to go into just praying over stuff. And we're just going to set an atmosphere for deliverance and people getting free. And uh, again, it's one hour from the 11.30 to 12.30. Come in with a spirit of expectation. You're expecting God to do something. If you don't need to be free from anything, you don't have to come. We don't want spectators. We want people that will participate and say, here I am, God, I'm ready to get delivered. Anything you want to share? Yeah, um, my grandsons were having some issues, discipline issues. So I took the cell phones away from them for a month. And their discipline changed. Why? Because the things they were watching unsupervised on their cell phones was affecting them. And our nation, these young people, our younger generations are being captured by demons through media and affecting them. And even their education, their study, their discipline, everything. And parents sit at the tables and let their kids play with us because they don't want to take care of them. The bottom line is they are allowing their children to be captured by the world and they're going to regret one day when they can't change the way their children behave because they've been right. taken. Uh, I had a friend in South Africa whose father was a Hindu um, priest. And he was going back to India and he asked his son to take care of the temple in the house for a week while they were in India. And he was cleaning the temple one day and he has to put down fruits for the gods. And he was cleaning the sun. He just lost his temper and he took the brooms and he hit and broke all the heads off these gods. So when his father came back from India, he said, Hey, son, what happened to the gods? He said, Hey, daddy, I don't know. But when I put the fruits down, the gods started to fight. <laughs> and his father said, Don't be stupid. They're only made of stone. Lights went on, and he immediately gave his life to Christ and destroyed the temple. So you see, that's what I'm saying. Things just become familiar. Because they're familiar spirits. And you know how children get affected by familiar spirits? You could put one child in a, in a room with another child that can well behave. The other child can be naughty. Before you know who you are, your child's misbehaving. Familiar spirits. You have to be attentive all the time. You know? So. Can we give the Lord a praise offering? 
Hallelujah. Remember, this phone doesn't just give you access to the world. It gives this world access to you. And if you can't control what you're watching on your phone or your computer, be very honest. Be very honest because this is where your deliverance will come. That means you are not in control because some other demon our control is controlling you. If you can't control watching pornography on your computer, your television, but uh, specifically on your phone, because this is where not just young men, women as well, has fallen to the, one of the deepest traps. And this is why people come to church after feeling guilty, because when you have downtime, this is what you go to. And you don't know it's bringing you down. And say that again. Media trap. The media trap. It's called a media trap. Now here, the word media comes from the word medium, spirit. That's what the media is. And any social media is just a, a way that the enemy, the spirit of the enemy, the devil, has information outlet. That's all it is. So I tell people, and you got to know, pastors, young men, ministers, women, married couples ex as well. Be very honest with yourself. This, how, this is how you'll get delivered. Put it on an age where you can't watch it. You would have to deliberately turn off the, the age where pornography can come through easily. Just be very straight with yourself. This is where you're going to get delivered. And I've been praying, God, give me a way to share because this is one of the greatest traps in the last days. You'll find it in the book of Revelation. It, it's not new. It's from Genesis to Revelation. And I'm telling you, it's, it's a very, very apparent. So it's not going to disappear. You're going to be in the body for the rest of your life as long as you are alive on this planet. You can't live without this body on the planet. So you have to learn how to overcome the desires of the flesh. Once you can get free from that stuff, I'll guarantee you, you'll start getting free from a whole lot of stuff that you, did, you never recognized you were in bondage to because it's tied to your flesh. Remember, Jesus or God cursed the dirt, the dust, when man sinned. This body, the Bible says, and this dwell, that there, there dwelleth within me no good thing. It cannot be saved. The body cannot be saved. It's just the house. It's meant for you to control it, not for the body to control you. You control your mind too. You know that, right? It's not meant to control you. And you are not the only one that has ever been in bondage. So I know how to walk in this thing. It's not going to happen unless you surrender Unless you acknowledge wherever you are, then you'll get free. And you'll be so free that you don't care about anything else. But I'm telling you, once you get free, you don't care about what people say, how they're looking at you. You, you know you're free from the bondage. And you can go home and you are not giving the enemy access to your house. Remember, this if you're at home in the com on the computer, whatever the case may be, you're giving, even after you get delivered, you invite that devil right back in through this. He's in your car. He's in your house. He's in your closet if you go there with stuff. He's everywhere, and you, uh, you your home is not free from stuff. He just, the enemy has free reign and he is saying go ahead cast me out and he laughs at you because he knows he continues to have access through those mediums and it's a way into your heart your life into your children and I've said this before and this is for brethren as well if you saw your daughter 
in a pornographic picture on your phone, whatever, wherever you watch that stuff. If you saw her, would you go and tell her you saw her? Because that would mean you had to be looking for it, looking at it. Would you tell her that? So can you say that you're free? I cannot deliver you unless I first get delivered. So this is what tomorrow is going to be about. He's going to hit some things real quick. You're going to see some hourly and one hour people get free. The devil crushed, his head crushed. Glory to God. When you get free from pornography, you know what? Give me your hand, babe. Come on. Your spouse, if you're married, is the only one your eyes are fixed on. Amen. <laughs> and I would hope my eye, her eyes are fixed only on me. If not, she can just turn it back towards me. When it's, when it's like that, just turn it right back. That's all you do. You're in control. There you go, babe. <laughs> yeah. But it's, 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 it's amazing to know how good it feels to be free. And I'm just telling you because I am. And I love it. And I don't have any guilt. That devil cannot come at me and say, hey, you remember what you did last week. He can't come at me. Remember, Jesus said the devil's coming, but he has nothing on me. Eyes married now. Glory to God. And hallelujah. Did you get a breakthrough tonight? You are going to get a greater breakthrough tomorrow. Now, if you are working, we understand. You, 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 you can't come and you can't be at, at your job and be here at the same time. But we are here for an hour. And I'm going to help him pray as well. And uh, just whatever he says to call up at that time, that's when we'll start ta tackling stuff. But, man, I want you to be free. I don't want you to be an old person still stuck in stuff. I don't want you to be a young person stuck in stuff. I don't want you to be a middle-aged person stuck in stuff. I want you to be free. Amen. And where the spirit of the there is I want you to stand to your feet and I want you to put your hand back on your heart and say God I can't do it by myself I've struggled in areas and I'm being very truthful with you because you know all things God, I've struggled in so many areas that I've allowed the spirit of shame and guilt to keep me from getting closer to you. And I'm asking for help tonight. I'm not concerned about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. But as for this day, I declare my liberty that I know Jesus by the blood of the Lamb will make me free as I submit myself. I surrender my genitals, my mind, my imagination, my fantasies, dreams, negative dreams, sexual dreams, hatred dreams. I submit to you, Father. Every part of my limbs, my whole body, Father, I submit it to you. And as your word declares, I present my body a living sacrifice from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. And I declare to the devil, in the name of Jesus, I am no longer the property of the enemy. I am now the property of Jesus Christ. You have no right to put your hand on this body, this mind, my genitals, my heart, in the name of Jesus. And with that, I break every demonic stronghold. In the name of 
Jesus, and I declare my liberty in Jesus' name. Satan, be gone. Chains, be broken in Jesus' name. Jesus, break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain in Jesus' name. Now begin to thank God for your freedom. says to shout unto God with the voice of triumph. You don't, you may not feel like it because you still have to confront the rest of this evening, but you can declare that the rest of this evening that I will be completely free and I will not be in bondage. And when you get up in the morning, Joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. Not again. This is real freedom. I wake up in the morning. This is how I wake up. Usually before I get out of the bed. I say, Father, thank you. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. And I say, thank you for waking us up this morning and giving me life, health, and strength. And I'm asking that you keep me today. Help me to get closer to fulfilling my purpose and destiny. These are things I say. And so, so God, as I give you glory, show me the things that I need to do, need to do today that will make that will ensure that the enemy doesn't have a, the ability to trap me. Make me aware of my surroundings. Keep me, God. And I'm asking you in Jesus' name, and I believe you, Lord, and amen and amen. Then I get up and get in the shower. Or I go use the bathroom. Amen. In some cases, I sit on my throne because it's my throne. I sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. <laughs> oh, glory to God. <laughs> but that's how I pray every morning. I'm just like you. I'm a man of like passion. Every woman is the same. Every man is the same. Every person is the same. We all live in this flesh, and we got to battle it. But God didn't make us vic uh, victims of our flesh. He made us victorious over our flesh. Glory to God. So tonight, 
thank you for that word. You got a, uh, my prayer is that Ron is my brother. You know, we're both African-Americans, but he's a real African-American. I'm, I'm just black. <laughs> and we both got the memo. We were wearing black and jeans today. And, and so, but we are, this is one thing we don't look at color because that's not the ministry of Jesus Christ, is it? We don't look at, there. there's no color in the spirit. In fact, we weren't created with flesh first. We were created spirit or actually not created. We came out of God. So that's the wonder of it all. There was no color and there's no color and no race when you go and stand before God because your flesh will never be able to validate you. You'll be there just like he brought you out of himself, literally mirroring his image. So, man, did you get this, Paul? Did you get this tonight? Glory to God. That's my Puerto Rican brother. Nationality, yes, but not, and that's only in the, in the body. But brother, thank you again. I'm going to let you go. Would you just, glory to God, are you clapping because I'm going to let you go? <laughs> oh, praise God, yes. Yeah, we know that school is tomorrow, and we thank you for staying this long. Uh, you know, we put them on a time limit, you know, but he kept going. I don't know why he did that. No, no, he's free. So, Father, we thank you that as we leave this building, but we're not leaving your divine presence. Now, remember, this is a benediction prayer. This, this is a, one of the greatest parts of the message and the service. The last things that are said before your departure. I thank you, God, that angels are dispatched to watch over us. Do you believe that? And to keep us. And I thank you because they are a sign because we are ministers that they literally serve. We are children of light. And I thank you for that privilege. Now that the angels are dispatched to watch over us, keep us from every oncoming vehicle or our vehicle from crashing into others. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you'll guide our vehicles, ensure that our homes are safe when we get there because you said in your word that you'll protect us and you'll keep us. I thank you, God. I, I pray that their eyes are open to see the incredible things that you have, that the doors will be open on their jobs, in their careers, in their businesses. I thank you, God, that checks will be all of a sudden given and they'll, they'll go to their mailbox and there, ooh, there it is. A check will be there from an insurance, taxes that should have been given, but they tried to withhold it, but they could not because they said they got to give this amount of money. I thank you, God, that state tax and, and other tax that are coming back to them every kind of resource that's out there that has been held up by the enemy in the name of Jesus take your hands off of it in Jesus name no God put it in the mailbox in Jesus name and when they go to their jobs let them find not a pink slip but a slip that'll say you just got a raise the income God prospering them in the name of Jesus they will be a blessing to the job that they're in and the owners will say since you've been here we have produced an increase a hundredfold and so we want to give you a raise as a result of it. God thank you that they are an instrument of increase based on your word and we bless you in Jesus name and those that will come tomorrow God we've all I already pray in advance put it in, on their hearts that they have such an expectation of complete freedom because they'll never walk backwards again. You designed them to walk forward in Jesus' name and to be victorious. And I thank you, God, for this is the hour. Now, everyone under the sound of my voice, as we are about to depart, Jesus said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And I thank it, our Father in Jesus' name. And we raise our voice again and shout with the voice of triumph in Jesus' name. Be free. Glory to God. Hug on your brother and sister on the
the way out. All of you from New Mexico, you're safe and free. Hey, now that you heard that word, if you want to catch the full message of what I'm sharing that you may not have heard in this, I guarantee you, you want to go to joycenter.org. That's J-O-Y-C-E-N-T-E-R dot org, O-R-G. And tune in and watch the entire program because there's a lot more than what you just saw. So God bless you. I look forward to seeing you soon.